In this video, we're going to focus on our viewing panel. Now, we've already touched on it a little bit because we've been working in our reels. And earlier, I touched on the fact that there is a flyout that reads reels right now that lets us access the different possible layouts that are available here for your viewing area. This flyout is actually called the view mode box if you want to get technical. So let me go down in my flyout and choose the next layout, which is the freeform layout. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice now we only see one clip. And it's just this big open space. It's exactly what its name says. It's a freeform area to organize, arrange, change the size, do whatever you want to do to your different media that are on the current viewed reel. Looking over at our media panel, you'll see, let me expand this out so we can see what we're looking at. Reel number two is what we're looking at. The reason why that happened when I switched to freeform was whatever clip you currently had selected, that reel is going to be displayed in the freeform area. And right now we only have one media source, one clip on this reel. You'll also notice the little eye icon right there indicating that reel two is what we are looking at inside of our freeform area. If I click on the eye that is next to reel one, now we're looking at reel one. If I select a clip in another reel, notice that the freeform area did not change. We're still looking at reel one. But if I take this clip that is on reel three, drag and drop it onto reel one, now it is also being displayed inside the freeform area. And of course, if I take this clip, which is on reel two, and I drag and drop it onto the actual freeform desk area, it moves that clip onto that reel also. So now I've got three different clips that I can arrange and organize in a freeform manner any way I want. Let's go down to our next option, which is the player. And whatever clip I had selected will be placed into the player now. So this clip over here was the currently selected clip on the reel and on the freeform viewing area. And that's why it now is shown inside the player. And if I select a different clip, it will then be displayed inside this player. Once you're in a player, you'll see the standard playback buttons. You can click the play button, play forward. You can step one frame backwards, one frame forwards. Also, you'll notice on some of the playback controls, there's a little black triangle in the lower right corner. If you click on a tool or a playback button such as that, if you click on that and hold it, you'll receive a flyout with different options relevant to whatever button or tool you are clicking on. In this case, it's the play button, so I've received different playback options. Do you want to play it once, loop back? Do you want to play it once, loop it, play back and forth, play from normal, which is the standard default, play within the in and out, your start, and so on and so on. You also have hotkeys to play back your media. Let me jump back to my first frame. If you're familiar with the JKL playback, that's very typical in an editorial program, it is available here in Flame. I hit the L key, I start playing forward. I hit the K key, I stop my playback. I hit the J key, it plays backwards. Hit the K key again. If I hit the return key, I play forward. If I hold shift and hit the return key, I play backwards. So you've got a couple different ways of using hotkeys to play back your media. Now to truly look at the next view layout, the source sequence view, we're going to need to create a sequence. So let me switch to that view and you'll see now over on the left side, whatever clip I select from my reels is being displayed in the source, but there's nothing over here in the sequence view. First of all, I'll go to the timeline tab where you'll be able to build the sequence. Also notice though, as I select any one of these clips down here in the editing panel, I now see that actual clip in a timeline. This is the source though, this is not a sequence. So let's create a sequence. So let's create a sequence and do very basic editorial just to look at this viewer. Typical workflow, not mandatory, but it's recommended for organization is you wanna create a sequence and have it go into the sequence reel. So if I right click where it says sequence, I can choose new and I can choose sequence. The new sequence creation dialog box appears and you'll notice that all the parameters match my project's parameters. So let's come in here and let's get rid of the part that says untitled and I'll leave it named sequence and then I'll just name it new for demonstration. 
We'll leave everything exactly the same, except for I want to change the duration of my sequence. I do not want it only one frame. I'll just click this and let's say 45 frames. And then I click create and now a sequence has been added and a new tab just appeared. If I click on the new sequence tab, we go to that sequence tab and you'll notice that the sequence view is now highlighted. If I click back on the source tab, you'll see that the source view is highlighted. Let's go back to our sequence and I'm just going to take this clip. I'm going to pick it up, drag it down and drop it right into my sequence. We'll talk more about zooming, panning and how you can use different tools to zoom in and out and change the percentage of what you're viewing inside of a viewer. But for right now, I'm just going to click where it reads 100 and enter 40 to make these two match as far as their percentage of what we're looking at. Let's go back to our media panel and I'll take another clip and drag and drop that in here and line it up. I'll enable the snap option to make sure I can easily drag and drop this next clip in. So now I've got three different clips inside of my sequence. So this is your source and sequence view. Now as I scrub or play back or work on my sequence, this view on the right is going to be showing my sequence. And of course, as I just mentioned, whatever clip I select over here in the media panel will then be displayed in our source view. The next view you have is called the triptych view. And when I go to that, we're now going to see we have three different views. And because I had this source clip selected, when I went to it, it is being displayed in every single one of the views. If I click back down on my sequence down below, now you can see that is what is going to be displayed and viewed in all three views. Notice that each view of my triptych view has this little color icon. It's orange right here, it's yellow right there, and it's green right there. And whatever view I click on, that current frame indicator down in the editing panel in my sequence will then be the currently active current frame indicator. And now I can scrub my green current frame indicator to a different frame. I'll click on the middle view, the yellow, and move that to a different frame in my sequence and I can click on the orange one to activate it and now I have access to move the orange current frame indicator. So this is a great view when you want to look at three different frames, three different parts of your sequence or your source images and compare them maybe for color correction or maybe you want to view three different effects that are applied to your sequence at one time. That's what this view is for. Now before we look at our last option, which is the trim view, I'm going to click on the center viewport to highlight that because I want that to be the currently selected viewer. And then I'm going to come over and switch to the trim view. Immediately, you'll notice that the cursor jumped to the nearest cut in my sequence. The trim view is very similar to any other editing application that has a trim view. It allows you now to come in and just really edit different elements inside your sequence. So these are your six different possible layouts for your view area. And there are hotkeys for each one of them. So let me discard that. And if I hit the tilde key, I go back to my reels. If I hold control and I hit the tilde key, I go to the freeform layout. If I hold control and hit one, I go to a one player. Control two, it's gonna take you to your source and sequence layout. Control three, brings me to the triptych view and control four takes me to the trim view. I'll hold control and hit the one key to go back to a one view player. So now you fully understand the viewing area and the different layouts available to you. In the next video, we're going to start looking at some of the workflows that are very unique to Flame that often confuse new users.